grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this fall day. Fall arrived right on time. Put the pool away yesterday, and here now it's raining and fall. I'm glad you all are here and didn't stay under your covers and came to worship today. Special welcome to guests who are with us. Glad you've chosen to worship here, and we hope you'll come back. There's a connection card in the pew. If you are a guest, please fill that out and place that in the offering plate when it comes by. That'll give us a chance to connect with you later in the week. Welcome also to those of you who are watching online. We'd like to connect with you as well. There's a QR code in the corner of your screen. If you scan that, it'll take you to a connection card. You can uh, fill that out. I was looking at them earlier today, and I saw Robbie from Indiana has filled out a connection card. So welcome to to worship to Robbie and everybody else who's worshiping with us online. We have about 300 every week that are uh, joining us online, and it's been fun As you fill out those connection cards, we get a chance to interact and meet you and get to know you. So thank you for taking the time to do that. We'll have more announcements later in the service, but at this time, I invite you to stand as we confess our sin and receive the good news of God's forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated. Do you have a worldview? Do you have a a framework of belief that helps you uh, interpret the news and the events of this world, that helps you decide what actions to take, especially when you're at a crossroads? Do you have a worldview, some basic assumptions about how this life is meant to be lived? Some might call it a philosophy. Do you remember learning about philosophy in school? I was a a philosophy minor in college because I thought it would get me an easy A, at least in some of my classes. And for half of them it did, but half of them were really difficult because the teachers had a philosophy against giving A's to anyone. But we learn philosophy or these worldviews in terms of moral dilemmas that are placed before us, and your philosophy will dictate which way you answer the question. So one moral dilemma. Is it ever permissible to lie to your spouse? Is it ever permissible to lie to your spouse? Your wife tries on a new dress. She asks your opinion, how do I look? You think it's unflattering? Do you tell her that? Or do you say, honey, you look wonderful? Depends on your philosophy and where you want to spend the night. The philosophy of consequentialism or utilitarianism tells you that you should make your choice based on what will result in the most desirable outcome. And so it's never one choice always. It always depends on the consequences, on what will happen. And so if you're worried about her self-esteem, then you might just say, looks wonderful, you look great, honey. However, if you think she's going to go to the party and someone's going to tell her the dress is ugly, then you might want to tell her the truth first so she's not mad at you later, right? It depends on the consequences. That's one philosophy. Now, maybe you're not a consequentialist, maybe you're not a utilitarianism, but you are a moral liberal, that you believe in moral liberalism. Liberalism says that individual freedom is the most important thing, and people should never interfere with the freedom of others. So imagine a situation where someone steals something at work. Would you turn them in, knowing that they would get fired? Or would you stay silent? If you're a moral liberal, you would stay silent. Don't interfere. Not my business. That's their business. I stay out of it. Or perhaps your philosophy is moral absolutism. You believe in the Ten Commandments, lying and stealing are always wrong, and so you tell your wife her dress is ugly, you turn your coworker in, and they get fired. That's the decision you make based on your philosophy. Each of these philosophies can be defined as a kind of wisdom, a belief system that guides our actions. And in our scripture for today, James wades into the debate between moral philosophies, between worldviews or wisdom. And he sees two options. He sees a wisdom that is from God and a wisdom that is from the devil, a wisdom that is from above and a so-called pseudo-wisdom that is earthly and unspiritual. And when he looks at his congregation, he sees people who have not decided which one they're going to follow. Sometimes they go with God's wisdom, sometimes they go with earthly wisdom, And he is unhappy with that choice. 
He says, you are double-minded, that you lack wisdom, that you are like a wave tossed about by the wind on the sea. And he says that the unstable are, the double-minded are unstable in every way. Instead, he tells Christians to ask for wisdom from God and to follow the way of God. And when you ask for wisdom from God, he says, you can tell by the way your life turns out. You can look at your works. You can look at the results in your life. If you ask for wisdom from on God, from God and follow that, it leads to a life that is pure, that is peaceable, that is gentle, that is willing to yield, that is full of mercy, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Or if you continue to follow the wisdom of the world, the pseudo-wisdom, James says that will result in bitter envy, in selfish ambition, in conflicts and disputes. So where would you find yourself this morning? James says, look at your life. Look at your works. Look at the results of how you're living. Do you find yourself at peace? Do you find yourself full of gentleness and mercy? Or do you find yourself feeling like a victim, angry at what others have that you don't have, wishing to get more for yourself? Bitter envy is that feeling that someone is getting what you deserve. A neighbor moves into a bigger house and you find yourself listing all of the ways that that's unfair that you should have the money to get that house, or it's all because the system is rigged against you. That's bitter envy. You might recognize selfish ambition if you're actually never satisfied with any of your accomplishments. They don't give you the peace that you thought it would. You get that new job, or you get a new spouse, and you still find yourself looking around for something better. James writes passionately that his, that that worldview that selfish ambition comes from the devil. It's so-called wisdom, and it leads to conflict. It leads to disputes both internally and externally. He says it leads to murder. God wants something better for us. The way of Jesus is better if we can die to ourself, submit to God, and resist the devil. Those who are wise ask God for wisdom. Ask God for help. Remember, in James chapter 1, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask God, who gives to all generously, and it will be given to you. It's a gift. When was the last time you asked God for wisdom? It leads to a peaceful life. And James tells us exactly how to get it. James is, if nothing else, always practical. I don't know about you, but when I'm scrolling the internet, I always pause on the lists, like 10 lists, 10 reasons to have, that you can have a better life, or, or 10 ways to get your house in order, or five things to do to get rich quick. It's never worked. <laughs> but I can't help stopping on the list, right? It seems so easy and straightforward. If I just follow these action steps, then my life will be better. And we're drawn to that kind of thing because we want answers, and we want simple answers, and we want instructions. We want concrete steps to take. Don't give me philosophy. Don't give me general ideas. Tell me what I have to do to have the better life. And James gives us this. He tells us exactly what we have to do to have a peaceable life, a gentle life, a life that's full of mercy. But let me ask you first, would you describe your life in the ways James describes the life of those who are truly wise? Would you say that your life is pure? Would you say that your life is peaceful? Would people describe you as someone who seems like they're at peace? What about gentle? Are you someone who attends to the needs of others, who pays attention and gently helps them with what they need? What about willing to yield? It's maybe the hardest one for me. Are you someone who's willing to change their mind? Willing to be convinced of something? Willing to let somebody else win the day? Are you full of mercy? Are you quick to forgive those who sin against you or, or have a slight against you? Are you willing to let people off the hook? 
Are you impartial? Do you treat everyone equally? Are you free of hypocrisy? Do your words line up with your actions? Does your life match your beliefs? These are the gifts of God. These are the result of a wise life. And the one thing you have to do to receive them is spelled out in James 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. God is the giver of good gifts. God wants you to have wisdom that leads to a life that is full of peace and purity and gentleness and mercy that treats people equally, without hypocrisy. Draw near to the giver of that good gift. Be close to God and let God's way rub off on you. Let his values, his philosophy, his worldview become your own. Our worldview isn't a a list of guidelines. It's not a philosophy in some textbook. It's not a list of instructions even to follow. Our worldview is a person that we follow. The person of Jesus. We draw near to God. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We remember the teachings of Jesus, and then we live our lives following his way. We believe the way of Jesus is the best way to live in this world. And the way of Jesus includes things like turn the other cheek, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, love your enemies, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those who are sick and in prison, And then what we learn from our gospel text for today, be a servant to everyone. The last shall be first. This is the way of Jesus. And we learn this way by apprenticing ourselves to Jesus, by drawing near, by hearing the stories, by learning from others who've been walking with Jesus longer than we have. That's why we're here in worship today. That's why we sing these songs of faith. We're drawing near to God. And it does take intentionality. Getting yourself in this room or streaming online, that is only the first step. But you have to, once you're in the room, once you're watching the stream, you have to tune in your your mind and your soul and your heart too to be near to God. You have to be here presently with your whole self. So reach out to God in your heart and in your soul and in your mind when you come to worship. Pray throughout this service. Pray that God would be close to you. Pray that God would speak to you. Pray that God would influence you. We draw near to God by worshiping with our body and our soul. And also throughout the week in our daily times of prayer. Do you have a daily time of prayer? Do you have a ritual throughout the week where you draw near to God? I know many of you use the resource that we hand out here at church, our daily bread. That is an excellent way to draw near to God, those simple devotions and prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so glad you joined us for worship today, and I pray that it blesses you. I know we've got members who are at home and can't come to church, or maybe we're on vacation, but for whatever reason couldn't be here. So glad that you found us. Please uh, fill out a connection card. Let us know every week that you worshiped with us. And we know there are many others who are all across the country. We have people from California to Maine to Florida, some who've joined the church, some who've been watching uh, on their own anonymously sometimes for a long time. We hope that it blessed you as well. Please go to our website, www.flccs.net, and you can give an online contribution to uh, support this ministry. You can also sign up for our weekly uh, emails that go out Wednesdays and on Sundays so you can stay informed about what's uh, happening here at First Lutheran. There's all sorts of invitations to in-person events, but also online events. And we hope that you would engage us in whatever way works for you and that you would continue to be blessed by this ministry. Thanks for being with us.